Easy Style Science presents Microbiological Techniques. The basic laboratory techniques in the preparation of a culture medium spread and streak plates using Escherichia coli. For the following activity, basic equipment is provided. This will include a 250ml beaker, a 100ml measuring cylinder, pre-weighed ingredients to make nutrient agar, a 10ml syringe, a disposable spreader, pen, wire loop, glass rod, a 1ml syringe, a white ceramic tile, a measured sample bottle, forceps, a watch glass and ethanol. Also provided is sterilizing bench spray, distilled water and two petri dishes. If you're requested to use PPE, personal protective equipment, please do so in accordance with the direction from your tutor. Benches must be sterilised before this activity is carried out to prevent cross-contamination. One of the most basic laboratory techniques is the safe ignition and control of a Bunsen burner flame. One of the primary means to achieve this control is the vented collar at the base of the Bunsen burner. The closed vent provides a luminous safety flame which can be seen and easily avoided for safety purposes. An open vent provides a blue carbon free flame which is used for heating. The gas tap is open when the tap itself is in line with the gas pipe. To control the intensity of the flame, the gas tap itself can be partially closed to restrict the flow of gas to the Bunsen burner. The Bunsen flame can be lit using a gas lighter or from a spint. It is best not to use matches directly to ignite the Bunsen. Always ignite the Bunsen on a luminous flame, which means the collar at the base of the Bunsen burner is closed. Making the culture medium. Measure out 50 millilitres of distilled water into the 100 millilitre measuring cylinder. Pour the water into the 250 millilitre beaker and add the solid ingredients which are pre weighed in the small pots. The list of ingredients and their weights are shown on screen. Always add the solid ingredients to the liquid medium and not the reverse as this will avoid any clumping of the ingredients. When all the ingredients have been added, stir them together. Set the Bunsen flame by closing the collar on the Bunsen burner so that the luminous flame will be produced. Never light the Bunsen burner underneath the tripod. Always light the Bunsen burner in clear view. Before moving the Bunsen burner underneath the tripod to heat the liquid, open the collar of the Bunsen burner to produce the blue heating flame. 
ensure that the tripod is stable before placing any beakers containing liquid on top of it. Give the culture medium a stir in case any of the contents have settled toward the bottom of the beaker. In order to achieve a clear nutrient agar culture medium, the liquid must be brought to a rolling boil. Because the liquid is viscous, this means that the liquid will climb up the sides of the beaker, hence the use of a 250ml beaker to heat 50ml of the solution. The safest and most efficient way to prevent any overboiling of the liquid and to remove the source of heat is to turn off the gas tap. Do not attempt to move the Bunsen burner from underneath the tripod as this may cause the hot liquid to spill. Allow the beaker and its contents to cool for a few moments on top of the tripod before removing. At this point the beaker can be safely handled using a pad of gauze or some tissue paper. Some of the agar medium can be poured into the sample bottle up to the measured fill line. This can be done directly from the beaker. When transferring the agar medium into a petri dish, it's much more efficient to use a 10 ml syringe. This allows the plate to be filled without removing the lid completely, thus avoiding cross-contamination. The technique used is to slide the lid slightly to one side and close it back over to add a further 5 ml of agar medium to the plate. 15 milliliters is an ideal volume in a petri dish of standard size. On a cool laboratory bench, the agar medium takes around about one minute to solidify. Once it has become solid, it, the plate itself can be inverted and labelled. Always label the base of the Petri dish containing the agar medium. Petri dish with the agar medium can be used to create a streak plate. A streak plate is created when a bacteria sample is placed onto a wire loop and streaked across the surface of the agar. To sterilise this wire loop, it is passed through a hot Bunsen flame. Do not use the light blue cone part of the flame at the base, as this is cooler than the rest of the flame. The wire loop is heated until it is glowing yellow. Never use the wire loop in a bacteria sample unless it has been allowed to cool. During this activity, leave the Bunsen burner alight on a luminous flame. This will prevent any settling of contaminants. Before introducing the bacteria sample to the agar medium, label the plate with the date and the type of bacteria used in the culture. Making a streak plate. From the bacteria culture sample bottle, remove the lid but retain it within your hand next to the little finger of your right hand. Flame the neck of the bottle. Obtain a sample of bacteria using the sterilised wire loop. Reflame the neck of the bottle and seal the bottle itself.
transfer the bacteria from the wire loop to the surface of the agar plate. Take care not to dig in below the surface of the agar as this may create anaerobic conditions and allow the growth of harmful bacteria. The streaking is carried out in a prescribed manner. Streak in the same direction whilst rotating the plate itself. Four directional streaks are carried out each with a decreasing concentration of bacteria. The final streak direction will produce individual colonies of the bacteria. Here is an example of a streak plate. The numbers appearing above the streak plate are graded in intensity of colour. This will give some indication of the concentration of the bacterial colonies produced by each streak. The petri dish lid is secured above the sample by means of sellotape. Use two or three pieces to secure the lid to the base of the dish. Never seal completely around the edge of the dish as this will create anaerobic conditions and may allow for the growth of harmful bacteria. Making a lawn plate. Using the one milliliter syringe, open the packet and leave the syringe within the plastic wrapper. Open the bacterial sample using the method with the little finger of the right hand retaining the lid Flame the neck of the bottle, draw up around about 0.5 of milliliter of the bacterial sample into the 1 milliliter syringe. Reflame the neck of the bottle and replace the lid. Use the white tile to set down the one milliliter syringe. When the bacterial sample has been introduced to the agar plate, it is spread about on the surface of the agar using a spreader, either a disposable spreader like this one in the example, or a glass spreader. The technique for this is to use the spreader in one direction and rotate the plate anti-clockwise so that the spread of the bacteria is completely to the edges of the plate. The spreader and the one milliliter syringe that have been in contact with the bacterial sample should be placed on the white tile provided rather than the surface of the bench to prevent cross-contamination. As an alternative to the disposable spreader, a glass spreader can be used. This is sterilised in the following manner, using ethanol and a watch glass. Once the glass spreader has been dipped in ethanol, it is passed through the Bunsen flame and the ethanol is burnt off, thus sterilising the glass spreader. A ring of antibiotic discs is used in conjunction with the lawn plate to assess the effectiveness of each antibiotic. This is calculated by measuring the zone of inhibition of growth of the bacteria around each antibiotic sample. The antibiotic ring is placed into the petri dish by moving the lid of the petri dish slightly upward without removing it.
petri dish lid is secured by means of sellotape as previously described. Do not seal completely around the petri dish. Here is an example of a lawn plate showing the zones of inhibition around each antibiotic sample. As good scientists we should always work in a tidy fashion and to prevent cross-contamination all the equipment used in contact with the bacteria is placed into a beaker of sterilising fluid. At the end of the activity the bench is sprayed and re-wiped and always remember to wash hands after being in contact with the bacterial samples.